Have you ever wondered how new fighter pilots learn to land a jet? I'm Tyrant, a real-world MiG-21 fighter pilot. Before stepping into a supersonic jet, every pilot starts small, first in basic trainers to master fundamentals, then in advanced trainers to handle speed and complexity. Only after that journey do we take on the MiG-21, where landing becomes one of the toughest challenges. Today, I'll show you how pilots train for it, the mistakes they make, and how instructors correct them including what I learned from my own experience. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the briefing hall. Good morning, gentlemen. Today's mission is to practice landings on the MiG-21. I'll begin by starting up the aircraft according to standard operating procedures and the checklist. After engine start, I'll taxi to the runway and take off. From there, I'll join the downwind leg to carry out landing circuits. For this sortie, we'll be using runway 22. This is the landing pattern. On the upwind leg, I'll clean up the aircraft by retracting the landing gear and flaps. At the crosswind turn, I'll roll into a 45-degree angle of bank. Approaching 700 meters, I'll level off and establish on the downwind. When I beam the runway threshold, I'll extend the landing gear. At the 45-degree point, I'll begin the base turn, descending to line up on final at 500 meters. On final approach, I'll maintain 400 kilometers per hour until touchdown. The sequence will be first a go-around, then a touch-and-go, and finally a full stop landing followed by taxi back to dispersal. That's today's mission. Let's head to the aircraft. Engine start is complete. Nose wheel brake disengaged. Engine gauges are within limits. Controls full and free movement. Let's request taxi clearance. Kudasi, in field one, request taxi to runway. Clearance obtained, let's taxi to the runway end. Today, the active runway is runway 25. Let's begin taxiing. Apply power to 65%. Release brakes. Brakes check. My brakes are serviceable. We should always check the brakes here. In real operations, we give a salute to the ground crew at this position. To make an aircraft fly, many people have to work hard. The pilot is the one operating it, but behind the scenes, there are many people sacrificing their time and energy. This salute is for all of them, as a gesture of gratitude. Let's perform taxi instrument checks here. These must be completed before getting airborne. It's very important and part of the checklist. Turning left, needles to the left, ball to the right. GMC, increasing, crossing 160. Artificial horizon, erect, slight pitch, no bank. GPS needle, pointing to the runway. Altimeter, airspeed indicator, VSI, all zero. Taxi instrument checks complete. Now we continue with the captain's briefing, a mental review of immediate actions in case of an emergency. This reduces reaction time. Captain's briefing. I will take off with full power, rotate at 200, airborne at 310. In case of partial power loss or engine failure before takeoff, abort, deploy drag chute, flaps up, nose down, and apply brakes. In case of engine failure just after takeoff, throttle idle, attempt relight. If no relight, I will eject. In case of engine failure in the area, I will plan a forced landing based on distance and altitude. If conditions are insufficient, I will eject. That concludes the captain's briefing. Before entering the runway, approach path clear, Runway clear, takeoff path clear, no aircraft reported at high key. Tyrant, request lineup. Now we can enter the runway and line up. During lineup, keep the nose wheel straight. If not, once you add full power and release brakes, the aircraft will suddenly swing left or right. During formation takeoffs, this can be hazardous. As a practice, always keep the nose wheel straight to avoid such incidents. Line up correctly. Nose wheel brake engaged. 
Check runway heading against compass heading. Engine parameters. Looking good. Controls. Full and free movement. Applying full power. N1 and N2. Okay. Hydraulics within limits. Temperature 700. Brakes released. Initially, maintain direction with rudders. And once they become effective, control direction with them. Speed approaching 200. Rotate and hold. Approaching 310. Airborne. Speed increasing. Positive rate of climb. 10 to 15 meters. Gear up. Confirm three greens. Above 100 meters. Flaps up. Approaching 300 meters, turn right with a 45 degree bank. Afterburner off. Watch the runway and adjust the bank accordingly. Level off at 700 meters and continue the turn. Look at the height now. It's around 800 meters. The student was unable to coordinate both the bank, height, and heading to roll out. It needs hundreds of hours of practice before becoming natural. At this stage, these mistakes are normal. When he accumulates more hours, he will naturally be able to do these things. For now, it's acceptable. He did not roll out with the correct displacement to the runway, so he is adjusting. If the displacement is wrong, it makes lining up on final more difficult. Abeam the runway threshold, check hydraulic pressure, within limits. Landing gear down. You can hear the sound of the gear extending and see the short arm light on. You must positively check for three greens on the landing signal panel. Sometimes you can hear the sound, but the gear only partially extends. The green lights only come on when the gear is fully down and locked. That's why checking the lights is so important. It's time to take the base turn. Different countries have different practices, but what I learned is to initiate the base turn at the 45 degree point to the active runway, using ground features as references. The base turn is one of the most critical parts of the approach. Let's continue the base turn. You can use whatever maneuver is appropriate to line up on the extended center line, but always keep your eyes on the airspeed indicator. Maintain 450 to 500 kilometers hour with a slight descent. Line up at 500 meters on final with 400 kilometers hour. See, the aircraft is slightly right of track. Unlike modern aircraft with autopilots, you must do everything in this jet manually. Even a one second lapse can be dangerous. This approach is much better. Here, we don't use approach instruments or lights, just the practice and habits you've developed over time. Speed looks good. It's reducing gently. That's how we practice landings in this jet. We won't touch down on this approach. Instead, we'll go up to the fly parallel stage and apply full power for a go around. I'll briefly break down the landing stages. Round out, flare, fly parallel, then full power. At this point, hold the attitude. It's too risky to increase pitch rapidly as it causes speed to drop dangerously fast. Height 15 meters. Positive rate of climb. Gear up. Check three greens. Notice here, the flaps are still up. Some MiG-21 variants have automatic flaps. Now we're again joining downwind for another touch and go. This is how new fighter pilots practice landings. Repeating circuits again and again. Normally, once a new pilot finishes advanced flying and begins training on the MiG-21, they're given around seven hours before their first solo. 
After that, they must pass a flying test with a senior instructor. His recommendation decides the pilot's career. We've rolled out on downwind with the correct displacement. Put the gear lever to neutral. Check height, heading, and speed. Fly with the correct parameters as much as possible. Never relax. Hydraulic pressure within limits. Landing gear down. Power to 90%. Remember, extending the gear increases drag, so you must counter with power. Check three greens and ARM light on. Initiating base turn now. As I mentioned earlier, many accidents have happened during the base turn due to stalls. This is where inexperience shows. That's why new pilots are taught to keep their eyes on speed and the extended runway center line. Maintain 450 to 500 kilometers per hour, never below 400. Lined up at 500 meters, this is a good approach. Maintain 350 to 400 kilometers per hour. Gradual reduction is better, but 400 is still acceptable even if it leads to a firm landing. If you can stabilize at 350 on short final, touchdown speed will be about 310. Smooth. Better a positive landing than a stall that turns you into a fireball. I closed the throttle a bit late, so you can see how long I floated after flare-out. That's okay for a touch-and-go, but not for a full stop. You'd run out of runway. In this aircraft, you can't afford mistakes. No second chances. Now, let's join downwind for the landing. Displacement is slightly closer, so we need to climb 150 meters to re-establish original parameters. Gear down, hydraulic pressure within limits. Power 90%. Check three greens, ARM light on. Initiating base turn at 500 kilometers per hour. Check runway, check speed. Slightly left of track, but it's correctable. 
Always make corrections as early as possible. If not, better to go around, provided fuel allows. No need to go around this time. Aiming point, speed, center line. This is the scan pattern for final. Close the throttle at the right point. Landing technique explained. Let me explain landing step by step. First, settle on the correct approach path and speed. Choose an aiming point slightly behind the threshold. As you approach, move it forward. Peripheral vision tells you when the ground is rushing closer. That's when you round out. Stop rounding out at about 3 to 5 meters above ground. That's flare out. Then fly parallel to the runway. Close the throttle. As lift reduces, the aircraft sinks. At that moment, Raise the nose slightly to land on the main wheels first, holding the nose wheel up. This is the standard sequence. Round out, flare out, fly parallel, nose straight, no drift, throttle closed. In supersonic jets like the MiG-21, you don't have time to call all this out. But this is the correct procedure I learned. If you've learned differently, drop a comment so we can share knowledge. Now let's taxi back and shut down the aircraft. I think you've understood how fighter pilots practice landings in their early stages, and most importantly, the theory behind it. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like content on specific requests, leave a comment below. Fly safe, goodbye, and see you in the next video. Thank you.